So my name is Peter Voorhees from Levine Cancer Institute, Atrium Health in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, my good uh, friend and colleague, Dr. Jacob uh, Laubach, had the uh, opportunity to present the updated results from the Griffin trial here at ASH this year. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, the Griffin trial was a study that looked at incorporating daratumumab or Darzalex into the lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone backbone or Revlimid, Velcade, dexamethasone backbone for patients uh, with transplant eligible uh, multiple myeloma. So the way that it worked is patients who were uh, participating in this trial were assigned one-to-one -one either to Revlimid, Velcade, and dexamethasone induction treatment, transplant, two cycles of Revlimid, Velcade, dexamethasone consolidation, followed by Revlimid maintenance therapy. Those patients that were assigned to the quadruplet arm with the Darzalex uh, received Darzalex weekly during their uh, initial induction therapy on the first day of their post-transplant consolidation cycles, and they also got Darzalex once every four weeks uh, out to two years. Uh, the update at this year's ASH uh, was looking at uh, outcomes uh, for patients after they've all received a minimum of two years of maintenance therapy. And what we showed was that depth of response was better for those patients that got the four drug treatment rather than the three drug treatment. So complete response rates of 80% versus 60%. When you look at what we call MRD or minimal residual disease, there was a higher rate of MRD negativity in the four drug arm versus the three drug arm. So by the end of two years of maintenance therapy, we hit 64% MRD negative rate in the quadruplet arm versus around 30% for those in the triplet arm. We feel that not just getting to MRD negativity, but sustaining it over time is very important. So when you look at achievement of MRD negativity for a minimum of 12 months, we've captured that um, to, uh, to this point in 44% of the patients who are treated with the quadruplet, the four drug regimen, versus only 13% for those that got the uh, triplet. So higher rate of MRD negativity and sustained MRD negativity. And I think what was probably the most important thing uh, as far as the uh, updated ASH uh, is concerned is the progression-free survival. So uh, uh, this is the time that patients are living, you know, uh, free uh, of myeloma uh, progression. And what we found is those patients that were assigned to the four drug uh, treatment uh, had a progression-free survival at three years of 89%, so nine out of 10 patients still in their initial remission without any progression. And the three drug arm, they also are doing very good, which is terrific, but the three-year progression-free survival rate uh, in that group of patients was approximately 81%. And this is starting to uh, uh, um, come close to achieving statistical significance, and it'll be important to, uh, for us to watch and see how that uh, matures over time. Two more questions. At what point will quad therapies reach that statistical significance for progression-free survival? And what does that mean for treatment and quad therapies as a standard of care? So based on the results that, that we've uh, achieved as far as improving depth of response, uh, the Darzalex, Revlimid, Velcade, and Dexamethasone uh, quadruplet is um, in the NCCN guidelines uh, for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients, so it is being utilized increasingly in, in the United States uh, at, at this point. Um, with longer follow-up, there's a good chance that, that we'll get that statistical significance as far as progression-free survival is concerned, but this was a study, this was a randomized phase two trial, it was not a randomized phase three trial, it was not powered to, to, to be able to see that difference in progression-free survival. There is a randomized phase three trial called the Perseus trial, uh, which is taking place uh, in Europe, which is designed in a very similar fashion, but a larger group of patients powered on progression-free survival as the primary endpoint. That has completed enrollment, and we definitely look forward to those results. But when you look at our progression-free survival curves uh, uh, on the Griffin trial, you really don't see that difference in progression-free survival start to emerge until two years uh, from, from initial treatment. And that's just a testimony to the fact that uh, standard of care myeloma therapy has gotten so much better over the course of time. The other, I think, important update that we provided um, from the Griffin trial, and we did this in, in connection uh, with our, our colleagues that spearheaded the, the master uh, clinical trial. This is a study um, that was led by Dr. Luciano Acosta at UAB looking at Darzalex with Kyprolis Revlimid and Dexamethasone, 
uh, for newly diagnosed myeloma patients. And uh, we really wanted to better understand the impact of adding Darzelex to Revlimid in frontline therapy had on stem cell collection. And there is definitely a signal of inferior stem cell yields when patients have gotten Darzelex in combination with uh, Revlimid as part of initial therapy. So that's very important because, I mean, from my own practice, you know, I am advocating that patients, you know, receive at most four cycles of therapy prior to collecting those stem cells. And a lot of patients may wind up requiring two days for collection of those stem cells rather than one. So I think as myeloma providers, we just need to be more cognizant of the fact, you know, that, that there is a, a minor, not, not a clinically significant, but that there is a minor impact on stem cell mobilization.